shell scripting. If you know anything about me, you know that I love shell scripts. And if you look at the top bar, you can see everything up here is controlled by a shell script that I made. Okay, everything. Now, I might, I might have taken parts from other people, admittedly, because that's just how shell scripting is. That's how any programming language is. But shell scripting holds a very special place in my heart because it is the quote-unquote first programming language I ever learned. Now, a lot of people might think, oh, it's just script stuff you can run in the terminal. Well, you can make it much more complex than that. You can make entire tools centered around just command line programs. So, that is what I want to talk about today. Uh, so, I was looking through the AUR trying to find like a good dictionary tool where I could just type in one command. I could just type in like define and then let's just say credulous. Well, some people don't know what credulous means. And, um,. But I didn't find anything like that, because everything was either extremely bloated, right, so it was made in one of these languages where you have like a billion dependencies, and instead of just managing dependencies through your own Arch, like my thing is Arch Linux, instead of managing it through Arch Linux's package manager, it likes to use things like Cargo, which is what Rust uses, pull like 300 megabytes of dependencies for one package. A bunch of things redundant just so it can build it and it's like why just just give me the binary or something so I was like I'm just gonna write my own shell script to do this and I started writing it and I was like this would actually be something cool to film because I ha it's been a while since I've written like a standalone program shell script kind of thing but um, I think it would be really fun to test out to show you the process of how I basically write any kind of program that I'm doing no matter if it's a shell script or something in C or anything, I use the same kind of logical processes. But uh, yeah, shell scripting, I'm really, well I wouldn't say I'm really good at it, but I'm decently good at it. I find it fun, and I think this could be informative for other people. So uh, that is what we are going to do. So here we have a Merriam-Webster tab, and this has credulous, like I showed you before, it's an adjective. And basically what I want it to print out is let's just say uh let's just open a bin window it'll say something like credulous adjective and then below it it will have like one and then we'll have this definition right here so let's copy paste that and then it'll have a second definition here and there you go and that is really all you need if you want to like do something like this or whatever maybe you can just add a couple dashes there you go and then it's all nicely formatted okay that is basically how I want it to look and um, with that we are going to get started so let me put on some music um, if I pull up my least in program let's listen to heaven from persona 4 and uh, this song will be playing the whole time so hope you don't get bored of it unless I have the main theme of Final Fantasy 7 uh, I don't. Oh, wait, it's called main wrong. Main theme. Is this it? That is not the main theme of Final Fantasy VII. Um, that's an orchestral version. Okay, we're just gonna listen to Heaven. Whoops. Alright, so, um, I'm gonna turn the volume down a little bit on my side. I think I already have a balance on the video, so it should be fine. So, the first thing that we wanna do is, uh, we want to, well let's get rid of the NeoFetch, shall we just pull it up? So the first thing we want to do is make a file. So I already have the uh, script we're going to call it, it's going to be called define, and you want to put your shebang at the top, okay? And that is basically what tells your, uh, sh well it tells the shell which shell to use when you're executing it. So if we want to use bash, we could just type bash, or bish, or zsh. However, I usually just try and stick to bin sh and keep everything POSIX compliant so it can run in any shell that is POSIX compliant. So that's the first thing we want to do, and actually I want to have that open at the bottom so we can test at the top, and then we can run at the bottom. Um, a few more programs we're going to need, we're going to need curl, everybody should have this anyways, but it basically can grab web pages, so let's just say I copy this, I want curl, paste that in there, it's going to print out the source code for the web page, that'll be important later. And the third program we're going to need, and you don't technically need this, but it's really nice, is shell check. And this will basically check your shell scripts for errors. So if I do shell check on something like, uh, 
Nissan, which is the script we're using to listen to that music right now, you'll see some errors. Now, they're not particularly... I mean, they are helpful. I'm sure they could help me out. Maybe I'll follow these things later. However, I don't need to do that right now. But it's, it's more just like formal errors. It's like if you want to make a formal program. Most of my code is very like informal, so you don't really need all of that. But um, so what we want to do here is we want to start this out and we want to make a help function describe what we want it to do. So it's really easy. All you have to do is print f and then let's say define by swimbles in the coop. And then we'll put a put two enters, I guess. Um, and let's just show you. This is what the help page for Leeson looks like. So this is how I've basically formatted everything. Leeson by Swimbles in the coop. So we'll say usage, and then we'll put define, and then oh, whoops, we'll need a dash. And I don't think we'll actually even need any flags for this program, so we can just do define word, and then that should be it. So um, oh, and we always want to print a new line character afterwards. Just that's just the best practices. Um, and we need to chmod plus x, this makes the file executable on our machine, I didn't do that yet. Run it on define, and then we can do dot slash define, and it's going to print that out if we actually wrote the uh, thing correctly and put the correct end quotation. There we go, so define by this from Sniku. So, there's a better way to do print f's if it's short things like this, where uh, every time there's a new line you can just put forward slash n, delete that forward slash n, and we can go here. It's going to print the same thing, but it's only one line, so that's very nice. And now we can have it so if we want a flag for dash h, which is dash help, then we can do that. So if we do this right, right now, it's just going to print out this because it's not set to handle flags. However, we can make a help function based off this, and we actually don't even need to make it a function, to be honest. We can, well, I'll just show you how case functions work. So, dollar sign one, this will be the first argument. So if I type, and uh, this is a comment if you put a hashtag at the beginning, by the way. If I type echo dollar sign one, save that, and you define h, well, it's going to just say dash h, because that is the first argument. So if we do case dollar sign one in, then it's going to automatically, this is basically checking for the arguments. So if we do dash h then, and then we can copy this up here, paste it down here, and then put two semicolons at the end. I don't know why it's two or anything, but it's just whatever. And then at the end we want to put ESAC, and then here we go, so um, echo program, and then let's go up here and define H. So it echoes program because this is outside, so it will always do that, and then it will print out the help function. If we just write define, it will just print out the program part. So that is how we do that. Now, if we want this to run inside a function, we don't want it to run every time then we just want to have it uh, basically be if it's empty, like you didn't define, if you didn't supply any word, then we can have it print the help function, so we can just do this. If the first variable uh, is equal to this blank, then, which is and and, uh, if you don't know anything about logical operators, I think I have a video about it. But basically, um, and and means if the first condition is true, then do this. Pipe pipe is if the first condition is not true, then do this. And um, the semicolon means doesn't matter if the first condition is true or not, just do the first thing and then do the second thing. And then the single and is do these things at the same time. Okay, very simple. So we're going to use and and for this. And the brackets are basically just an if statement. So it's saying if the first variable is equal to an empty string then and then we're going to have it print the uh, print f thing so we can grab that again um, whoops let's go down here and then let's do this okay I know it's a little bit um, uh, unoptimized but it it works for now 
we could technically actually why don't we do that so we will define a variable called uh, help so we'll just make it help and I always make all my variables all the way uppercase even if it's not supposed to be that way according to like standards or whatever it just makes it easier for me to visualize and uh, we will take this and assign help to it oops that's quite good okay so now we can just do this and instead of printf whatever that is uh, we can have a printf help okay and then uh printf help and then that should work so you can see the first variable since it is empty is just printing the help function um, and what it's supposed to do is if you type in like some word whoops I didn't mean to go down there type in some word then it will define it obviously we haven't written the code for that yet so we're just going to I guess we're gonna do that now so here we go um, yeah, we want to print F help. I think I actually deleted it. I was moving. I was just typing random letters that did that. Anyways, we have that. So we have our help function down. We have a flag set. Now, if it's not dash H, if that is not the flag we want, then we just do this. And then we will say um, define underscore word. Now, obviously, that's not a function yet. We can create that function up here. So let's just make a lot of spaces so we can get that out of the way. And define underscore help, or not word, not help, word. And then two parentheses and opening and closing. And then a opening bracket. And then down here we'll put a closing bracket. Okay, so that should give us some space and makes it easier to kind of. Now, here's the problem. If we try and do this, we feed an argument into define word. Well, how are you supposed to do that? What we need to do is we need to take this and put dollar sign at. And that way, we can actually use the, I guess, the numbers. So I can say, like, echo dollar sign one. And by the way, when you have things in a function, you always want to use tab to indent them or four spaces. It doesn't really matter, but I like using tab. It just makes it easier since it's literally just one character. Um, so echo that, and then I can show that this will actually work. So if we use define, it's empty, uh, and we'll just print out that. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think we will actually need the terminate thing anymore. Yeah, we don't. So if we use define empty, it'll do that. If we use define dash h, it'll do that. And if we use define and then some random word, it will print out that random word. So that's the way we know that it's actually reading that word. And we can actually, instead of print f, how about we use echo? Hold on. Print f, echo. And then we can just run the same command here. There we go. And then, uh, hold on. There we go. And uh, just realize we need to do de echo dash, what is it? N-E. I think it is. Maybe it's the just dash E. Let's see here. Yep, it's dash E. So make sure we just use a uh, echo dash E here. And perfect. Okay. I don't know why there's a terminating uh, li end line there or whatever. Don't ask me. Sometimes things are just a little bit uh, weird. Actually, you know what? We could just do this for an F. Perfect. Okay. That's a little bit weird. I don't think I've ever seen that before. So now we're actually going to write the code to grab the definitions, which is arguably the hard part. So what we have here is we have a function. And I'm sure if you know anything about programming, you know what functions are. And they're very useful for basically doing a lot of things without a lot of direction. So all we ha the only direction we have is the word. And luckily for us, Miriam Webster instead of making it obfuscated and hard to use, just has miramwizard.com slash dictionary slash the word. So if we go here, we can use a program I call vimcurl, which is literally just curl-s url type into vim dash, and that reads it from standard input, and here we go. So this is the source code of the web page in vim. So what we can do here is we can search. So 
ready to believe. Okay. And we can find there are multiple places it is on here. And we are going to find the best one that allows us to use regex using breath to basically find it. So what we can do is we can go through all of these and the best one is going to be the one with the most unique things around it. So we're going to just keep going. This is looking pretty promising right here. Ready to believe, especially on slight or uncertain evidence. And this is actually all one line, as you can see indicated over here. And, uh, hold on. Yes, so it is one line, one very long line, not sure why. However, this actually seems like a very good way that we can grep it out because of all these spaces and stuff that's very unique. So this is the line that we want to grab. We're just gonna grab one line for now and I copied that to my clipboard with a Vim macro I've set up. Um, but you can easily just highlight it with your cursor and right click or whatever you use to copy. So here we are, we're going to curl the web page. So curl-o and let's just say one html so that way it'll if we run something like curl or define credulous it'll curl it it'll output it to a file called credulous.html be very easy so we have it there now what we want to do is we want to grep and we will run this right here we're going to grep that out of one dot html and so now it is searching for that string. However, here's the problem. It has all of this right here, and this is actually going to change between different words we feed it. Now, assuming that they use the same format on every single web page, we can just delete all of this, insert, and put dot, uh, asterisk. Sorry, I was blanking on what it was actually called. And uh, if we want to just make sure that it's not going to get like globbed or anything, you can change to single quotes. And uh, this will just make sure that it runs properly and it's not trying to interpret anything inside of the string. So there we go. We have our grep and then we want to make it sure it's dash o. There we go. And that's for grep dash only. So it's only giving us this string right here that we're asking it for. So how about we go here and uh, how about we actually put the uh, windows back to a decent size. Um, we go here, back to, uh, oh let's get out of here. And we will run define and it will give us the help. And um, I just realized we need to make sure that it's not actually going to try and basically run define word when we don't have any arguments. We'll figure that out later. So define, and then we'll say credulous, and it says no URL specified, and you know why this is, because we actually never gave it the Merriam-Webster URL, which I just realized was a dumb mistake of mine. So we're going to curl this out, and then instead of credulous, we're going to use the first argument, and that way, like if we want to change the first argument, we can change it to whatever we want, and it will give us that definition. So here we go. I'm going to save that and run define credulous again. So let's actually make this silent so we don't see its progress in downloading the page. And right here we can see that it says ready to believe on slight or uncertain evidence. Now we can see it is actually going to print out all this extra stuff. We don't want all that extra stuff so what we can do here is we can actually grep that and run hen, head dash n one. And that way, it'll only print out the first line, its first match. And I think there's a way in grep to do that. Actually, I think it's dash m, dash capital M, I mean. We'll see. Yeah, I, I don't remember what it is, but it's not important for right now. We can optimize it later on. But that will basically limit it to only print the first line. If we wanted it to be the first two lines, it could be two, three, four, whatever. So we're going to do one. So we're going to do define credulous, and it will give us all that 
Now we don't want all this strange HTML stuff in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to erase it. So we can use, we can just highlight all this real quick. And we can use sed, which is the stream editor, to get rid of anything we don't want. So let's run sed. And the syntax for sed is s for substitute. And then we will put a slash. You don't have to use a slash. You can use a colon or a pipe. I think underscores, but don't quote me on that. I wouldn't try it because I have no idea. But I always try and go with slash. And sometimes, like you can see here, there's a slash in the string. If you want to try and... Well, if you want to use slashes, you're so adamant about using slashes that you don't want to have to try to escape the character. Well, you're going to have to escape the character by running, putting a forward slash before the slash. That way it's not trying to interpret it as a substitution. So, um, but in my case, since I don't want it to do that, I'm just going to put a pipe. I'm going to paste in that string from before and then put another pipe, put another pipe because this is what we're using to substitute. So we're going to substitute this first string with this second string. So right now it's going to replace it with ASDF. However, I want to replace it with nothing. And then just put a, another single quote, run that, and we will define credulous again. So it'll say, ready to believe, especially on slight or uncertain evidence. So we can get rid of this uh, terminating span as well by piping that again into said running uh we can just use the left bracket and then anything after that slash slash and then that should there we go so it gets rid of span and then if we want to do what we had before where it was like word definition so we can say uh word one uh, actually, if we just put this all into quotes, then we can do echo word one. So word credulous, and then the first definition is going to be this. So we're going to do what's called a, um, I don't even remember what it's called now, subshell. There we go. So we're going to do a subshell, and that is basically running a command inside of a command and something we can do with that so let's i'll just show you this so echo abc that will print out abc we know that however if we want to print out the contents of this command then we could do echo and then put a dollar sign and a bra or not brackets parentheses around it and that will print out basically the output of this command now it's going to be ABC, of course. However, if we want to run something like printf ABC, that means we're not going to add an extra line or new line at the end. Then we can just run our own new line. Now, this is kind of a useless situation for this. However, we're going to show a useful one right here. So we want this to say, uh, let's do find friend do this again. We want it to say one colon, like they have here, one colon space, and then the definition. So what we can do here is we can do echo one colon, and then we can use that subshell we talked about, go to the very end, put the ending parenthesis, put that uh, quotation mark, and we can define credulous right there. One, ready to believe, especially on slight or uncertain evidence. So that is basically the framework of the program right there and <clears throat> it works on credulous so we can't get too cocky yet we have to find some other word and we also have to add a 404 handler so let's just write right here all right to do 404 oops I'm sorry, 404 handler okay that'll just be a reminder that we need to do that um so let's just think of another word. We'll say uh, awesome should be in the dictionary, right? Great, inspiring awe. So if we do define, we can do awesome. And then it says inspiring blank. And do you know why this is? Because the word awe is a link. 
and so we're gonna have to add in a separate handler for a link. I purposely chose a word where it didn't have any links in the definition, but we're going to have to add a link handler. So we're also going to have to do link handler. And the last thing that we need to do is find, I guess, just another word and... Well, actually, the, th next, the last thing we need to do is get the second definition. So another thing, to do two definitions. Okay, so those are the three things we need to do. But right now we have the framework of a working program. So let's just try and find a word without any links in it again. Uh, no, I th let's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to do that. Okay, veneration. So let's just define veneration. And we can see that it's actually working for that word. So the only three things we need to do are add a 404 handler, which is extensively easy. Like, this might be the easiest thing. Um, link handler, which should most likely be easy because it's probably just going to be a regex that we need to do. And the second definition, and that might be hard to do. So we're saving that for last. But the first thing we're going to do is the 404 handler. And let's just put at the end of this um, function, remove one.html because I don't want it cluttering up my home directory. As you can see, we have veneration.html and we have awesome.html and credulous.html. So uh, not vim, we're gonna remove those, sorry. So remove one.html. And that way we can just not have clutter, okay? Now, if you want to keep them, just comment out that line, but I don't know why you'd want to keep them. So, we're going to add a 404 handler. So, after we curl, we're going to check for 404. So, and by the way, I always encourage commenting on your program. So, right here, it's going to be check for 404. And if we're going to do that, then we need to actually get a 404 page. So let's just start typing in random stuff. Okay, so words fail us. Sorry that we're doing it for can't be found in the dictionary. Okay, so what we can do is copy this string, and then we'll say breath this string in 1.html. And if we can find that string, and we should actually send it to uh, slash dev slash null, this will silence the output of grep, and we can actually, well, I don't think we're going to need to do that, but we can see when we get to the, we'll see about it. And if that grep works, so if it succeeds, that's what the and and is for, if it succeeds, then we're going to echo word, actually we can just echo, sorry the word you're looking for can't be found in the dictionary, and uh, let's just fix up those uh, single quotes real quick, sorry the word you're looking for, and uh, I think that looks like a weird comma, I'm not sure, whatever, so sorry the word can't be found in the dictionary, and then exit, and then if we type in dot slash define, something random, uh, let's see here, for some reason, the grep that we're supplying it does not seem to be succeeding. So it's thinking that the uh, thinking that it's an actual word that we are uh, basically getting. Um, if we vim dfu, oh well, we have it removed. How about we get rid of that so we can actually diagnose the problem? So vim dfu whatever. That's kind of odd. For some reason, this HTML is blank. Let's try and curl this page. Ah, okay. I just realized something. It le it redirects you to a not found page. So we can really easily just check if the file is blank, and if the file is blank because if we're trying to curl it, it's not going to do anything. Oh, well, it's going to curl the not found page. But we try and curl that page from before, so let's just say, uh, slash dictionary, whoops, 
uh, HTTPS mirror elixir slash dictionary slash whatever 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 and that is just going to redirect us to 404 okay so that is great when we curl it is going to make a blank file so if we grep and we can not grep this is actually pretty good so if we grep this right then that means that the file is going to work but before we even try and grep that we're going to just check if the file is empty so this is probably a bad way to do this to check if the file is empty but i'm trying not to look anything up just to show you that it's possible to do this with just memory now looking up is great it's great to look things up but you can just do this from sand, like simple standard commands that you have so if cat one dot html whoops maybe we should do this and basically we're gonna subshell catting which is uh, basically outputting so if we wanna do that script from earlier cat it's gonna print everything up to the command line and if we cat uh, what this right here that's gonna do nothing so if we cat that and it equals no output then we want to echo this right here. Echo. Sorry, the word you're looking for can be found in the dictionary. And we want to exit. And let's just get rid of those pesky uh, little single quotes again. And uh, let's get let's actually use double quotes for this because it uses single quotes in the string just to make sure it's not going to screw up and try and interpret them. So now if we try and define that, um, operator circuit, let's see here, did I screw something up with the operator? Give me a second, I have to think. Uh, let's see here, let's just, uh, put this in quotes to make sure. It's always best practice to put things in quotes. See, there we go, that was the problem. So sorry, the word you're looking for can't be found in the dictionary. Um, so we're gonna put the word thing, we're gonna try and put that below the 404 handler. That way it just, it just works out better for everything. Um, and we can actually now, since we're gonna put it below the uh, 404 handler, we're gonna do echo-e, like we showed before. And we're going to do, uh, that is not the way I wanted to put the E, that was not working. And then we're going to do word, uh, sorry, I cannot type today, I've just been struggling all around. And you don't need the spaces, in fact, I'm actually going to get rid of the spaces. I did not need to go to the beginning of the uh, buffer. Anyways, get rid of that. And then that should work, so let's define an actual word awesome yeah there we go so it's gonna look the exact same it's all gonna print out at the same time too which makes it better um so we successfully added a 404 handler so we're gonna separate that from everything else we're just gonna say handle uh 404 words okay and this is basically the meat of the program right here one line where we get the definition however we're gonna need to and let's get rid of the 404 handler to do. We're going to need to handle links in the word. So how about we go back. And uh, we go here and we'll type in awesome. And we are going to curl this. And we're going to put it into vim. So we're going to vim curl that and we're going to say inspiring all okay and we're going to find here it is so we want to get rid of any time and let's just make this bigger again to show that it's all one line we're going to get rid of any time that it says a ref dictionary slash something class whatever we want to get rid of all of that so we're going to go back down here, and we're going to go to the sed command, and let's just go to the end, 
And before this last command, so we're not getting rid of everything. So we're not getting rid of that span and stuff too. Uh, let's just put that on a different line so we can focus here. Uh, said s slash get rid of all of that and then anything that would be page specific so literally the word all get rid of that and then we are going to place it with nothing and then in case it's in multiple places we're going to put g for global okay and then from there on that should if we pipe it back into that that should be able to give us a proper definition of awesome. And uh, I was thinking, yeah. so define awesome. So there seems to be some kind of error with said character 26 that's not very specific. However, if we go down here, we can see, oh, the exact situation I was talking about earlier with the slashes and whatnot. So these slashes are actually screwing up the said command, so we're just going to use pipes like I talked about before. And, um... Pipe. Pipe. And let's see if that works. Okay. So it still says inspiring. So we're going to have to do a little bit more thinking. Let's get rid of this said command right here, because that might be interfering, and we'll just do that. And as I was expecting, it was, in fact, interfering. And for some reason, the said command to get rid of the inspiring part, the, uh, and let's put this back, sorry, I keep forgetting to do that. To get rid of the uh, the A for F stuff, that isn't actually seeming to run, and I'm pretty sure that I saved it. Oops. Pretty sure that I saved it. We're gonna run it again just in case. <clears throat> okay, so that's simply just refusing to take it out. So that means our regex is either wrong or the computer's gonna be fine. And <clears throat> in most cases, it's gonna be the regex is wrong. So let's look here. We are getting rid of everything. I suspect that it's going to be around the dot asterisks. However, we can't be too sure. And um, for some reason, I also think that it is here because of the single quotes potentially messing up. So we're going to actually use double quotes just in case. I don't know if it'll make a difference. Um. I'll put a escape character before these quotes just in case. That way we're not escaping anything. And we're going to define awesome again. Okay, so there we go. Now it says inspiring all, and it has terminating A, terminating span, which means that we can put back in that phrase that we had before, S slash, and then it will be opening bracket dot uh, asterisk slash slash g and then put a single quote go back up define awesome boom inspiring all and let's just find it on some other page just to make sure that it's going to work out it might not work if it has two links in one thing well, of course this one's not going to say anything how about extent um nope that's just one uh, I wonder how it's going to handle scope. I don't want it to show scope, but we can see what it means for our uh, definition script. Okay, well, it just gets rid of scope. Thanks. <laughs> Except it also seems to get rid of extends. Not sure why this is. If we look back here, this doesn't say anything about all, so it's not like we're just gripping out one specific thing. But I... S I suspect it has to do with this statement here once again. So we're gonna get rid of it. Go back up to or something. And class. There's some kind of extra class here. Hmm. Give me a second to think. Okay, so before this was a DX text class. But now, it is some MWTA link class. 
and that is not good obviously so good thing that we caught that we can get rid of any of this stuff so once again we're gonna do a sed command we will run uh, whoops don't do that oh, I have to type sed again s slash <coughs> mm, sorry about that guys slash slash g and then we're gonna go back and we're going to escape these quotation marks uh, here we go and we're going to not use uh, slashes sorry I'm just very in the habit of using slashes and then we're gonna go back up here find extent and then we got rid of some of it so let's just try and get rid of the rest uh, get rid of all that scope nonsense. Actually, we can probably just use that thing we were using before. Said s slash opening bracket dot asterisk slash slash g and run that again. Perfect. So now we have an even better regex that we are using for more words. And this is just how Style Super goes. You're gonna start writing a little bit more for each command and it's just going to apply more generally to everything. So let's just try and find a word with more than one link in it, just to make sure. <coughs> uh, unbend, maybe? If I don't find it within like three words, then we're just going to assume that this is a... This is interesting, putting a colon in here. This doesn't look like a normal colon, so let's see if it will actually do anything interesting. To free from flexure. Okay, so <laughs> it is not going to put the second part of the definition. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure if it's going to be necessary to actually have the second part of the definition if we're going to get a second definition in. But you know what? We can do it. So let's run this. And if it's not too complicated and does not interfere with our current regex, then we can see make or allow to. You know, um. And then we're going to be down here. Here we go. So this is why it is using some kind of opening bracket mechanism here. So let's just get rid of all of this, this strong class thing. And then we're going to go back. Said, so we're running said like a million times here, which is going to be common for web scrapers like this because that's essentially what we're building a web scraper. And by the way, I have no idea how long this video is going to last, but this is going to be worth it. So we have that. Fortunately, there are no slashes in it, so we can just do slash slash g and then we can pipe that and then we can do we can just get rid of the uh wrong thing and I can just type that myself actually s slash and then we'll just use an escape character for strong and that should be it slash g type that again and we will exit that define unbend make or allow to become straight perfect so we have a nice defined script here now. Um, we can add a second definition if we want to. Honestly, I think this video is getting so long that uh, I'm probably going to call it quits here soon enough. However, you get the point. You could probably do this yourself with all the stuff I have told you here. So we added the link handler, and you know what? We only have one more thing to do. Let's just do the two definitions. I'm not going to try and get every single definition in because some things are like four definitions. I think if you're looking for a word, you can pretty much get the gist of it from the first two. So let's get the uh, unbend again. Whoops. And to cause to relax. So then, oh wow, we already had the link in here. However, so it's to cause to relax. Uh, here we go. So it seems. I think I know why. I just realized that grep that we did at the very beginning where we do head-n1, we might not need that. We might be able to just get rid of it. So uh, let's just do 
get rid of here real quick. Define and then. Okay, so we can actually just get literally every single definition and just print them. Okay. So that was that was unexpected. That's literally easier than anything else we probably could have done in this. Um, I might want to get rid of these things that say to unfasten. But that's actually part of definition three, and there's two parts of definition three. But you know what? Honestly, it does not matter. We can actually just do this. Get rid of one colon. Whoops, that's not a one. Uh, get rid of that. And then let's just uh, limit it to the first two. So we will do this. Go down. I don't know why I did that. And we will do head dash n two. Go back up here. Define unbend. And then we can have one and two. Um, I think we would have to separate it into two different commands if we wanted to print the commands, uh, or if if we wanted to print them with a one and a two on it. But at this point, you get the point. There's there's certain things you're just gonna have to take a few shortcuts, take a couple liberties on. But you get the point. And you can even let's just make a variable for it because why not? Head dash n number. Actually, we don't even need quotation marks. It's just a number. Head dash n number. Uh, let's just say of deaths, and then that should be zero for right now. But if we go here, number of deaths. Let's just say two, and then let's just do that real quick. Should do the same thing, and then if I want five. I can do this, it'll print out 5, and uh, let's just keep it at 2 though, and we'll print out 2. So I basically just built a dictionary script from scratch, I didn't need any complicated high level programming languages, I didn't need just a million random things that nobody really needs, and I just wrote uh, basically my own program and it has help uh, whoops, dot slash <coughs> for how we had to run dot slash anyways we have that and uh, let's just put that we could we have a help function here so uh, go back up here define dash h and then if we want dash dash help to follow the actual standard then we can do that too And then, all right, perfect. So, in this, if you were watching and you were trying to follow along, we have basically just written our own dictionary script in less than 20 lines of shell script. This is easier, faster, maybe, and more versatile than a program that was probably 2,000 lines written in Rust. This is just a really good example of how minimalism can do you well. This music player that I have running in the background the whole time, guess how many lines of code it actually is? 74. Okay, and a lot of it is probably really unoptimized. I think I could probably combine a lot of this into like functions and whatnot, but it doesn't matter because it works and it goes pretty fast. Now, admittedly, I have added a little bit of bloat, you know, I have some color, I have a dependency check and whatnot, because it's supposed to run independently. I can just put it on a system and be like, oh, this system doesn't have MPV install or VGM stream or anything like that. So, that's all that we needed to do. We wrote our own web scraper. This web scraper is going to go to the dot local in directory in which place we can now just run define and run it on let's just say bow to cease from competition or resistance to suffer defeat so there might be a little bit of a couple bugs you know you might see an extra colon every once in a while or something but I can get rid of that stuff later that's really trivial stuff we just made our own script that does basically dictionary stuff. And look, it fits in one tile. 
on my ThinkPad screen. So that's it. That's all we needed to do. You don't need all these complicated programming languages. Write a script to do it. People will tell you that you can't write a script for it, okay? I made a script to make an RSS feed out of literally, uh, let's see here. My web page on here, I think it's colon slash tab equals activity. Okay, if you go to the activity tab, you see where it says Swindles Make Group push to master at Swindles Make Group Arch Packages has like this little update database thing. People told me, they're like, oh, you can't make an RSS feed out of that because I want an RSS feed that would show every time I pushed. And you know what I did? I did make an RSS feed. Okay, if we go to news, but go down here, Swindles Make Group at get XYZ. Okay, you can see all my commits push to master, which these are all the same things. If you go in, update database, update database, you go back, add program, add program, has the date that I did it and everything, okay, and it's honestly really simple. If we go here, uh, and you can actually find it on get CVPS XYZ, it's called get T RSS, uh, RSS, hold on, that's going to take a little bit of a while, here we go. And uh, you can see, it's right there, you can see the link at the bottom left if you actually want to check it out. But honestly, it's not that hard. It's literally the exact same stuff we were doing before. Now, admittedly, it's a little bit more complicated. I have a thing so you can upload to an FTP server, which is like 20 lines of unnecessary stuff. But it's only a 70 line shell script. It is not that hard. These kinds of things people think you can't do it with shell scripts, but you can, okay? Anything that we want to do you can do it with a shell script. Now people might say, oh it's slow, why would you write a shell script for that? Because you made it, and that's what you should be proud of, okay? That's, that's the end of my rant. Uh, I am probably, well it's only like 10 something, so I probably won't go to bed soon. Um, thanks shell script that I wrote for telling me what time it is, by the way. Anyways, I'm probably gonna upload this, I'm going to push it to my dot .files git repository, maybe I'll fix it up a little bit, maybe I'll add a couple comments here and there, but it is pretty much done. That is a script that we wrote together, I wrote it on video in one sitting, and now I can just define any word. So if I want to define credulous, boom, we know what credulous means now, and I just realized we need to get rid of the... Uh, Hold on, I'll put the music back on. We need to get rid of the uh, HTML files. One dot HTML. Perfect. So, uh, and here's just something, here's a nice tip if you stay to the end. Set dash E. If the shell script errors out, then it just quits the shell script in general. So, we can put that. And there we go. And that is a done shell script. Have a nice day, um, go do something, make a shell script for something you want to do. If you're like, oh, I wish there was a program out there to do this, just do it. Anything that can be automated, you can do it with a shell script, okay? Now, I'm working on figuring out how to get networking, uh, not downloading, but uploading. If I can figure out how to upload things, basically, with a shell script, then that's going to be pretty much everything I'm doing on my computer. Half of it's just going to be shell scripts. So, uh, yep. Have a nice day, and if you watched all the way through, I'm impressed.